Good evening and welcome to Monday Evening Prayer on what's been a beautiful day, absolutely glorious and I pray wherever you are that you've had a good day too. <clears throat> the sun has been shining and it's been an ideal day for getting into the garden. I'm looking at nature, revealing to us the beautiful treasures in all the beautiful spring planting. Oh, thank you, Lord. So let us begin. We light this light for all our Franciscan brothers and sisters within the Christian family. And we also remember several of our own members who are struggling with illness at this time, especially Sister Jane in Coventry and our dear Sister Jackie in Idaho, in America. And we remember our dear sister Diane and her grandson, our nine-year-old grandson, Tyler, who's waiting for surgery to replace, well, not to replace because he's got no esophagus, but we're hoping that they can use a piece of bowel. So we pray for those of our members, including dear sister Miriam in New Zealand. Father, Mother, God, thank you for your abundance to each one of us and for laying your healing hand on all of us here and all whom we will pray for during our intercessions. Amen. <clears throat> our Monday evening prologue of our brother and sister as scenes of Mount Sinai we read we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother, God, the earthly mother, and all the great masters, and reverence to the holy, pure, and saving teaching, and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday evening we commune with the angel of peace, saying, Peace, peace, peace. Angel of peace, be always everywhere. We now reflect the crescent moon and the moonlight, invoking and visualizing universal peace in all spheres of life. And I want to pray this beautiful protection prayer for all of us, and especially for those of us who've heard the call of Christ to come follow him into the monastic life, and especially for those who are struggling. In the name of all that is, we draw a bloodline by faith around ourselves, our health, our abundance, our home, our families, our life's work, our friends and our clients, and their associates, the brothers and sisters of the Teo community of interfaith Franciscans, and all our Franciscan brothers and sisters around the world. And we draw a bloodline of faith, knowing that there is power, wondrous power, in the blood of the cosmic Christ Jesus. And neither Satan nor any of his co-workers, dark energies or entities can ever cross such a bloodline. Amen. And there's another beautiful prayer to our Lord Jesus. We believe in thee, beloved Sananda Jesus, and we trust in thee. Come to the aid of our weakness and our incapacity. Grant that we may be able to make thee known and loved, excuse me, by all men and women, and that confident in the immensity of thy love, we may be able to combat the evil which is in us and in our entire world. For thy glory and our salvation, amen. And the next prayer is a prayer that we used to say as young novices back in the 60s when I was training to be a nursing monk. In the comfort of your love, I pour out to you, my brother Jesus, the memories that haunt me, the anxieties that perplex me, the fears that stifle me, the sickness that prevails upon me, and the frustration of all the pain that weaves about within me. 
Lord, help me to see your peace in my turmoil, your compassion in my sorrow, your forgiveness in my weakness, and your love in my need. Touch me, O Christ, with your healing power and with your strength, so that I may return to you a child of God, whole, perfect, and complete. Amen. <clears throat> Our first reading is from Psalms Now by the Reverend Leslie Brandt and Psalm 108. My heart is glad today, O Lord, and I am determined to serve you. I celebrate your presence. I glory in your love for me. I sing your praises and yearn to proclaim your loving concern to all. The people I travel with have little feeling for you. They act, they act as if I do not exist. They are empty. Their lives have little meaning or purpose. They bounce about in a vacuum, the deepest longings of their hearts unfulfilled. I know to whom I belong and I know where I am going. I know that you are my Lord and that you will accompany me as I walk the streets of the city and mingle with its groping inhabitants. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will use me, that through my fumbling efforts, you will touch some soul with your healing love. My heart is glad today, O oh God, Grant that I may communicate to others some measure of this eternal joy. That is a real upbeat sound. And it puts into perspective, doesn't it, our relationship with God and the joy that we have in our heart of being of service to God. <clears throat> our next reading is for praying out loud. Interfaith Prayers for Public Occasions by L. Annie Forrester. It's a beautiful little book. And here we read, Remembering Our Virtues, Spirit of Life and Love, which moves through us and through all the world. May we this night be grateful for the gift of life which is ours, remembering tonight and always that the life we have and hold is to a mystery and precious. May we this night be reminded of the responsibilities we carry, not so that we are intimidated or overwhelmed, but so that we may be true to them, so that we may be faithful in carrying them forward. May we this night maintain a sense of perspective, remembering who we are, engaging the tasks at hand, but understanding our limitations, understanding our own shortcomings, forgiving ourselves and others if we fall short of perfection. May we this day be inspired, be filled with new breath, be filled with new enthusiasm, be ready to see fresh opportunities and new perspectives, unnoticed avenues for action and resolution. And may we this night remember those virtues that bless our lives and bless the lives of others. The virtues of caring and concern, the virtues of honesty and respect, the virtues of charity, industry and patience. And may the members of this family maintain a high sense of their calling. Remember that they are invested here with honor and called to a wider vision of the world, a world made more fair more just, more equitable by their efforts. Amen. And now we're going to have a slight change <clears throat> and play one of Marilla's beautiful songs, which I dedicate to you, and also as a pick-me-up for our members who are unwell and for our Franciscan brothers in the Christian family, especially for Sister Corazon, her son Daniel, and of course her brother Faustian, and not forgetting Miriam, Jane, 
Jackie and Diane. Fill my house unto the fullest. Not lovely, all I own and all I do, I give to you. I would like to read to you now from Jesus Now by Leslie Brand. And for today, this evening, our reflection what it means to believe. And he refers us to the Christian Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, verses 53 to 54. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. You who seek God must try to understand what it really means to believe in God. As food is eaten and thus received into the body and thereafter supports the total life system of the individual, so the Spirit of God must be embraced, absorbed, taken into your spirit to become the source of your strength as well as motivating purpose for your lives and living. Jesus has come from God. Assuming your humanity and subjecting himself to the same forces that shape your life. He has identified with you in order that he may relate to you. He is the light of God and he is the love of God. The communicator of his grace to his creatures in the world. You are to identify with him partake of him, receive him as your Saviour and Lord. And when you do this, you become restored children of God, and you become with Christ lights that force back the darkness 
that threatens to shroud this planet. And when you do this, you truly do begin to live for yourselves, for others, and forever. Your profession of faith is important. If it is sincere, it is a beginning, but only a beginning. A genuine profession will be followed by obedience to Christ's will and the purpose for your lives. You become one with him as he is already one with God. You become with him the children and servants of his Father, Mother, God. There are scores of people who assume they are working for Christ and yet have not become identified with him. There are others who seek to use him and his name to push forward their own agendas and projects or further their own self-centered objectives. They even call on him for help when life becomes too much for them to handle. Yet they have not allowed him to become the source and the power of their lives. They have not really learned what it means to believe in God. And that's tragic. But I guess we're all human. And in our humanity, don't we fall down miserably? I know I have, and I'm sure I will again. But the key is to call on Christ. And he always gives you a hand, a helping hand, to come out of your ghetto of fear, self-loathing, despondency, maybe despair and depression. Or maybe you're going through the dark night of the soul, as I have done many times, where I felt that God was very far away. But in reality, he was right there. So we come into the presence of Christ. We come with an open heart. And we come to share with our brother, the Christ, the Son of God, what ails us and what troubles us. And this evening, when we began our evening prayer, <clears throat> we remembered especially all our brothers and sister Franciscans within the Christian family, all the various Franciscan groups, the Capuchins, the Ordinary, the Tertiaries, and now our own community, the Franciscans of Interfaith, where we were asked by Christ and Francis, much to the annoyance of the traditional Franciscans, how could we embrace other faiths? But that's what we were asked to do. And despite the rejection and despite the uncharitableness from within the Christian community, we are following what Christ asked us to do, to do something that, that is very dear to his heart that we welcome the children of God, the children of the God of many names, Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh, Source, Supreme, Creator, Vishnu, Ganesh, Krishna. It's all the same God. And you and I are here not to condemn another, but to embrace Christ and God in them and not to embrace them with dogma or insult, but to embrace them with true Franciscan hospitality, a warm embrace, a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit or a piece of cake, but the idea, the whole emphasis on being a Franciscan is to bring that love that we treasure, Christ's love, to those who may be estranged from Christ or may not know him and they will judge us by our fruits, not by our habit. So let us pray now that through the gospel the Lord Jesus calls you and me to share in his glory. Let us make our prayers with him to our heavenly Father, Mother God. And we pray tonight for all nations that they may seek the way that leads to peace, that human rights and freedom may be everywhere respected and that the world's resources may be generously shared. We pray for all believers and those who do not share our belief, 
that we who profess to love God above all else, that we will strive for peace and harmony in our local community and throughout the wider world. We pray for our families and our friends, that we may empower each other to see the face of Christ in each other, particularly during those times when we are being tested or insulted for being a Christian. We pray for ourselves, that in the coming week we may serve others in our work and find peace when we rest. We pray for the faithful departed, that through your divine mercy, O Lord, they may rest in God's eternal peace and love. So let us be still now, whatever is troubling us. We may be concerned about someone we know and love who's hurting. Let's name it, bless it, and let's give it to God and leave it with God in a mindset of gratitude. And just say, thank you, God. God for little Poppy, our little cavalier that we rescued six years ago, who's got a heart murmur and she's been rather poorly on and off. And during yesterday evening, I was getting so concerned for her, thinking, is this the time when we have her put down? And I prayed to Christ and I just said, Lord, just fold your arms around her and give her some quality of life but not my will, but thine be done. And this morning, her little tail was wagging. She seemed a happier little dog and not fighting for her breath. And I thought, oh Lord, this is such good news for my heart because I feel it for her because she had such a difficult, traumatic life before we rescued her from a breeder who should have known better. So little Poppy has had a really good day today. And we say, thank you, Lord. But now we pray <clears throat> for you and for all our many friends on social media, for Skip and Thomas Aquinas and Google Hangouts, for all our friends on social media, especially Twitter, Sister Veronica Paul, for Caroline, for Julie, for Kathy. Oh, there's so many to thank. For our friends on Facebook and LinkedIn. Thank you for your support and love. And we pray tonight for those who are struggling, especially in South Sudan, where they're now saying that 20 million of God's children are going to experience famine. Some are already going through it with no water, no food. And Jesus said, when one of my children is hurting, the whole family, the whole mystical body of Christ is affected. So when we sit at our tables and look at the food we're eating, it's so easy to become complacent. And sometimes I feel as a contemplative monk who lives the enclosed life, there's times when I want to go there. I guess the nurse in me is still wanting to rescue, to go, even if it's to wash their clothes or or just reassure them that God will provide. But I guess we have to hold it all in prayer and trust in God. Trust in the power of prayer. Talking of prayer, we now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to all of us here tonight our daily bread. Forgive us the times when we have wronged you, for the times when we've abused your name and your love, for the times when we've been underneath, uncharitable in thought, word, or deed, for the times when we've not listened to your voice, when we've ignored it. Lead us not astray, O Lord, but protect us, from the forces of evil, negativity, and despair. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. So let us find a little prayer. Ah, here we are. From the Book of Comfort and Healing. I'm going to open it at random. From Judaism. And this is the way of the world. When a child is born, all rejoice. When someone dies, all weep. We should do the opposite, for no one can tell what trials and travails await a newborn child. But when a, moral, when a mortal dies in peace, we should rejoice, for they have completed a long journey, and there is no greater boon than to leave this world with the imperishable crown of a good name. Isn't that lovely? So now we pray. Lord Jesus, you know in our hearts that we love you. We thank you for this free live stream channel that links us up with all our brothers and sisters around the world in different time zones. And we give you thanks for our community and for the Frank Lara Abbey of peace and compassion that still is in the ethers. And we thank you for bringing good from the delays. And now for our closing blessing. The blessing of heaven, the blessing of earth, the blessing of sea and sky, on those we love this night, and on every human family, the gift of heaven, the gift of earth, the gift of sea and sky, the gifts of brother sun and sister moon, and the gifts of the animal kingdom, be in your heart now and forevermore. Amen. As I come to blow out this flame, I thank the Lord Christ for touching all of you here, and all whom we have remembered in prayer. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. Namaste, shalom, inshallah, pax et bonum, om shanti, sola di caritas, salam alaikum, and may the peace, the love, and the joy of the risen Christ be in your hearts as we now prepare for the climax of our 40 days of prayer and fasting, and that is to see the resurrected Christ and to experience his love. Amen. Good night and God bless you. And thank you all for being here. It's such a joy to my heart, knowing that there are others with us in prayer. Amen. Amen.